All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome. This is the Stock Scores webinar, How to Analyze Any Stock in 10 Seconds. I'm Tyler Ballhorn, founder of StockScores.com. I'm going to talk for about 45 minutes on this topic. This is a real important kickoff to the webinar series that I am doing over the next two weeks because it really provides the foundation of analysis so that when I get into some of the other topics next week and, and the following week where I talk about how I day trade, how I position trade, um, you'll need to understand the concepts I'm going to teach tonight. So I would say this is probably the most boring of the webinars that I'm going to do in the next two weeks, but it's also essential because it provides you the foundation, the framework for what we'll do in the other webinars. All right, so I'm glad uh, so many of you are here. We've got a big audience, and uh, that's great. It's nice to see people from all over the world participating, and I hope it will be uh, enjoyable for everyone. The itinerary for tonight, I'm going to start by explaining what an inflection point is. We're basically going to focus on one chart. I'm going to go through uh, how I analyze that chart, with uh, starting with inflection points. I'll then talk about the six elements of chart patterns and how we put them all together. Talk a little bit about this concept of time frame confirmation. I'll then give you an overview of uh, the trader training options that we have with stock scores, uh, the upcoming live class that I'm doing at the end of the month. And then at the end, I'm going to apply what we've learned, take your stock questions, and analyze the stocks that you post to me. Uh, we have a big audience, so I probably won't be able to get every question that you post, but I will do my best. So don't start posting them yet because they'll, I won't catch them. They'll be too far up the page for me to see. But... Um, when uh, I prompt you, you can post symbols for me and I will do some analysis and I'll try to analyze the overall market given the, the big drop in the market today. Many of you may be wondering uh, what is next. All right, so that's the itinerary for this evening. Let's first begin then with the concept of inflection points. It's a very simple idea, but they're really, really important because they are the building blocks of chart analysis. The peaks and valleys on the chart are what we use to construct price patterns. And an inflection point specifically is the point where price either stops going up and starts going down or stops going down and starts going up. It's kind of a simple idea. If you look on a chart, you see little mountains, you see little valleys. Those are inflection points. The pointy parts are the inflection points. It's kind of where the control of the market changes. You know, if the sellers are aggressive and they're pushing price down, well, at some point, they just get tired of pushing it down. They, the sellers get unmotivated to take a lower price. And so the price stops changing direction and starts to go up. And then the buyers are pushing it higher and they're in control of the market. And then they get a little tired. They say, well, you know what? I think we're paying too much for the stock. We're not that motivated to push it much higher. And price starts going down. Well, those turning points on the chart are what are uh, inflection points. All right, so we'll see that in the chart in just a moment. But pretty simple idea and real important because chart patterns are based on inflection points. So here is a chart of uh, stock on the Toronto Stock Exchange. And I chose this one because it has lots of inflection points. Um, it's actually an older chart, but the point is we've got all these little peaks and valleys here. And we can sort of draw little arrows at each one to define those peaks and valleys. You probably remember when you were a kid or maybe last week playing that game Connect the Dots. You know, you go out to uh, IHOP on the back of the menu, there's the little Connect the Dots game. Well, that's what we're going to play here with inflection points. We are going to establish where they are, and then we're going to draw lines across them to establish what the six elements of chart patterns are. All right. So what are the six elements of chart patterns? They are support, resistance, optimism, pessimism, price volatility, and abnormal activity. And we use those to gauge where a stock is going to go or where it is likely going to go in the future. And once you understand these six things, you can read a company's future in five or ten seconds because all of these things and how they interrelate really has predictive value. Chart patterns have predictive value. I make my living trading the stock market. I get up, trade the market all day, 
You may not want to be a day trader. You may want to be just a long-term investor who does five trades a year. If you can understand these six things, not only can you sort of focus in on the winning stocks, but also avoid the lousy stocks. So let's go through the six now, returning to our example, and just uh, sort of help explain what each of these mean. So let's start with support. So support is drawn at any inflection point low. So if we just start off here by picking all the little valleys on this chart, and I'm just highlighting them here with my little pen tool, uh, any one of those valleys is an inflection point low. And we can then draw horizontal lines at the inflection point lows to establish where support is. Now, what does that price level mean? When I draw that horizontal line, what does it mean? Well, returning to what I was speaking about earlier, which was the inflection point occurs where price starts or stops going down and starts going up. In the case of inflection point lows, it's where the sellers lose control. The sellers are pushing price down. And then at some point, the buyers say, hey, the stock is priced too cheap for what the fundamentals are worth. We're not willing to let the stock go below, in this case, 78 cents. And at 78 cents, the buyers get aggressive, they take control of the market, and they send it higher. So that line that is drawn on the chart actually has some meaning because it is the lower boundary at a certain point in time of what the sellers are willing to sell for and the buyers are willing to come in and, and prop up the stock. You know, the job of the stock market is to figure out what the company's future earnings potential is. How much money is the company going to make in the future? And to do that, investors consider all available information out there in the marketplace and try to make a guess about what the fundamentals of the business are worth. When I say fundamentals, I mean their products, their services, their management, their balance sheet, their income statement, how much debt they have. How much is earnings growing over time? All of those concepts are the fundamentals. And there are thousands, if not millions, of investors analyzing individual stocks trying to figure out what the company is worth, how much money it will make in the future. So when we look at a chart, what we're really looking at is a graphical representation of what that argument is that is going on in the stock market each and every day. And when I draw lines of support, we're seeing boundaries, lower boundaries, of what investors think the fundamentals are worth. All right, so real important concept because when stocks go down through support, when the market establishes a floor price and then price drops down through that floor, it implies that there is some new information coming into the market that justifies investors taking a lower price. You think about the what was the the biggest in terms of market cap, the biggest company in Canada on the Toronto Stock Exchange just a few months ago was Valiant Pharmaceuticals, symbol VRX. Unbelievable performing stock over the last few years. And in August, it was the largest company on the Canadian stock market. I'm not sure what the valuation was, but it was bigger than Royal Bank. Well, about the third week of August, I believe, I'll maybe have to pull up the chart just to confirm that, Valiant broke through support. It had a well-defined floor. It broke down through that, giving a very strong sell signal for that stock. And it wasn't until a few months later when we got the report from a, a short seller in California, I believe, a guy named Andrew Left, who has a company named Citron Research, who said, hey, this company is kind of built on a house of cards and a lot of the stuff that they're doing isn't very cool. And we've seen that stock really get decimated. It is no longer the biggest company on the Canadian stock market. Well, you didn't need to know all of the fundamental research that these short sellers did to figure this out. All you needed to do was look at the chart and say, hey, it broke support this week. Something's wrong. And I'll show you that in a little bit. All right, so that's support. Now let's talk about resistance. Resistance is pretty simple. It's just the opposite of support. We start with the inflection point highs. So look at the little peaks on the chart. All you got to do is find the little pointy parts and draw a horizontal line across them. So we can draw a few horizontal lines on this chart. 
and I'm not making real straight lines because I'm using just my mouse, but you get the idea. Resistance is an upper boundary of what investors think the fundamentals are worth. It's the upper limit based on all of the information that investors have about the company's ability to make money in the future. It's the maximum price that investors will pay for the fundamentals. And it's important because, again, if there is new fundamentals coming into the market that justifies investors paying a higher price, then you will often get a break through that resistance level, and that starts an upward trend. So you can see back here the stock was trading in a range of between 40 and 50 cents for two, two and a half months. And then on this particular day right here, it broke through that ceiling. What was behind that? Well, investors who study this company very closely decided that the fundamentals were worth more than what anyone had been willing to pay for some time. And that caused that stock to start to go up as more and more people learn about those positive fundamentals the stock goes into an upward trend and you can see over a number of occasions the stock breaks through resistance and that becomes the next leg in the upward trend. So resistance, simple horizontal line drawn at past price peaks. Let's now talk about optimism and pessimism. Optimism is if you have rising inflection points from left to right, you have optimism. All right, so I can say that the market is very optimistic about this company because every time the sellers are strong enough to push price down, they're unable to push it as low as they had the previous time they pushed price down. And you can see at a number of occasions here, you've got rising bottoms, you get the sellers pushing price down for maybe a week, week or two, and then they just don't have the power to push it any lower. The buyers step in and overwhelm the sellers and push price up again. And the fact that there are rising bottoms on the chart implies that investors are optimistic about this company. Well, what is pessimism? Obviously, it's falling tops. If you can identify inflection points that are falling over time, then you have pessimism. Now, there's not many of them on this chart, but there was a brief period in September and into October on this chart when we had pessimism because the tops were falling on the chart. Now you don't want to own stocks that are in a pessimistic mood. If the sellers are stronger than the buyers, there's probably something wrong with the fundamentals of the company. And if more and more people learn about those negative facts, then price will be driven lower over time. So you want to avoid stocks where there's pessimism and you want to consider stocks where there is optimism. Now we can actually define a trend line using the inflection points as they rise or fall over time. All that we do is, remember I said we were going to connect the dots, so let's just draw these little inflection points and draw a line through them. Well, there we have a downward trend line. Here we can draw an upward trend line across the bottoms as they rise from left to right. You can see the line gets steeper over time. That's because investors are getting emotional. The steeper the line that you draw, the more enthusiastic or emotional investors are. But that is another uh, type of support or resistance. Trend lines that are drawn across the tops or bottoms as price moves are another line of support or resistance. So this is a line of resistance here, a downward trend line. And this is a line of support, an upward trend line, it's consistently moving up from left to right. Now, if I had the ability to draw a nice, neat, and tidy straight line, you would see that the stocks will tend to bounce off of their linear trend line many, many times. And I'll show you that when we do some stock analysis. All right, so we've covered off four of our concepts. We've done support, resistance. We've done optimism and pessimism. The next one I want to talk about is price volatility. How much is price changing over time? Here you can see that price is changing a lot more over time than it was here. In this circle, we've got basically narrow sideways trading action, narrow range, tight pattern. And here we have price moving up consistently over time. That implies new information, but it also implies investor uncertainty. As a general rule, 
the more volatile a stock is, the more uncertain investors are about its ability to make money in the future. So when you have a stock trading in a very narrow, tight range, like we have here or here, that implies that investors have become confident about what the company is worth. When you get breaks from that and volatility is expanding and increasing, it implies that investors aren't sure about what the company is worth. Now, being unsure isn't a bad thing. It can be unsure and optimistic, which is what drives an upward trend. It can be unsure and pessimistic, which drives a downward trend. Now, what we want to do as traders looking for opportunity is find situations where volatility is diminishing over time. The reason that that is important is because diminishing volatility typically comes before a trend. Now, trends are how we make money. You know, if you bought this stock at 50 cents and four months later it's at a buck 50, you're a pretty happy trader. Well, notice that the start of this upward trend, let's call it starting right there, began when the stock broke from low volatility. Now, how do I know that it was low volatility? If I draw a line across the tops and I draw a line across the bottoms, notice that those lines are converging toward one another. Anytime you have a line across the tops that is converging, moving toward a line drawn across the bottoms, you have diminishing volatility and that means investors are gaining confidence about what the stock is worth. Now you can see that there are a few instances here where I can draw a line across the tops and a line across the bottoms and find that they are converging toward one another and therefore I have narrowing volatility and that presents opportunity. I could also draw a line across the tops like this and across the bottoms like this and say, hey, those lines are not converging, they are diverging at that point. And therefore, price is telling us that investors are growing uncertain about the company's future. So very important concept, one that's often overlooked when people analyze charts, simply how is volatility changing over time? Is it diminishing or is it expanding? Now we want to look for breaks from diminishing volatility because they imply that there is new information coming into the market that justifies paying a higher price. All right, let's uh, take a look at the next and final concept and that is abnormal activity. So what is abnormal activity? Anytime the price makes a move, a bigger price move than normal that stands out visually on the chart, you have abnormal activity. And it's all relative to what the stock did in the past. So here is a day when the stock made an abnormal price move relative to what it normally would do. You can see normally it trades in a pretty tight little narrow range. And then one day it makes a gain that's probably three or four times what it would normally gain. We can also look for abnormal volume. Here is a day when there was volume traded in that stock that was higher than any day going back a number of months. So that implies that investors are excited about something. If they're willing to pay much more, if they're willing to push price up, and they're willing to do it with a lot of trading volume, that means that there's a crowd moving toward the stock, and that is a clue that investors are getting excited because the fundamentals are getting better. Here's another abnormal update. Here's a day that stands out. Here's a day that stands out. Here's a day that stands out. You can see there's quite a few abnormal days to the upside on this chart. So let's put it all together. We want to consider stocks that are breaking through resistance from low price volatility, from optimism with abnormal activity. That is a simple collection of rules that will help you find good stocks to buy. And I'll repeat it again, breaks through resistance from low price volatility, from optimism with abnormal activity. Let me draw a little sort of quick price chart here. Let's say price is going up, stops going up, the sellers take control, push price down, pushing price down, the buyers take back control, push price up, and then down again, and then up, something like that. 
So that would be a visual history of how price has changed over time. Well, now I can sort of highlight all the inflection points. All right, so we're going to make some dots to draw lines on. Now let's join the lines across the bottoms. And what do we have? We have optimism. Let's join a line across the tops. We have a line of resistance. Because those lines are converging toward one another, we have low price volatility. And finally, if we have an abnormal break to the upside, that implies new information coming into the market that tells us that investors believe the fundamentals are worth more. Now, you can do this analysis on any time frame. If you are a day trader, you might look at a two-minute chart and do this analysis. If you are a long-term investor, you might look at a weekly chart and do this analysis. You can do this analysis on a daily chart, a 15-minute chart, a monthly chart. It doesn't matter. It works just the same. What it is showing us is what investors are, uh, what, what investors believe about the company's future over time. So what have we got? We've got a breakthrough resistance right here from low volatility right there, from optimism right there, with abnormal activity, that big move to the upside, and abnormal move showing that investors are excited. So let's put it together in an example. Here you've got a stock that was in a very narrow, quiet range here. You can see the optimism was building. The volatility was low. We get an abnormal price move with abnormal volume. The market was screaming to us, hey, look at this stock. There is something going on here that has investors excited, and it is causing the stock to be pushed higher in an abnormal way. The people that make this break first are those that follow the company the closest. The people that are buying the stock up here are the retail investing public that doesn't know any better. You don't want to be part of this group. These are the people that pay too much. They're paying full retail. These are the people buying wholesale. They got the best information and they're buying that trade early when the trend is just starting. Why? Because they have better information or they know how to use a chart to tell them what to do. It's important to understand that the stock market is not fair. There are always going to be some investors that get better information than others. And when they act in the market, they will paint a picture for you. And that is why we use stock charts. Now, we can do our analysis on many different time frames. As I said earlier, I can apply this analysis to a two-minute chart going back two days. That's what I would do if I'm day trading. I could apply it to a 30-minute chart going back two weeks. That is what I would do if I was swing trading. I can apply it to a three-year weekly chart, which I'll show you in a moment. That is what I would do if I was a longer-term investor. And there can be a very different message in the short and long term. If we look at the long term chart, I'm going to jump over to, uh, pardon me here, I'm going to jump over to stock scores. And let's pull up a long term chart of the Toronto Stock Exchange energy sector. So this is a three year weekly chart of the energy sector. I've got a little tool on my computer called Snagit, so I can grab this chart and draw some lines on it. Just do that now. And let's draw lines across the tops. Make that a red line. Okay. So you tell me. You don't have to tell me, but just think about it for a moment. What is the dominant mood of the market on energy? Is it optimistic or pessimistic? It's pessimistic. We can see that because the tops are falling over time. It's no more complicated than that. What is the dominant mood in terms of... Uh, the very short term. Well, to answer that, we have to change time frames. So if I jump back to stock scores and I make this a three-month daily chart, well, now what do we see? Well, over the last three months, we've actually had some optimism. How do I know that? Let's snag the chart, draw some lines on it. I'm going to take out my little line drawing tool here. And notice I can draw a line across the bottoms that is rising from left to right. Now, we actually have a little bit of conflict here because we also have falling tops, don't we? So in the more recent history, let's say the last month and maybe five weeks, we've actually got a neutral chart because we've got falling tops and rising bottoms. All right, so I would say short term, I am neutral on oil stocks in Canada, but long term, I am pessimistic.
Now, what about the very short term? Well, let's make this a two-day, two-minute chart. Uh, let's make it a let's make it a five-day, fifteen-minute chart. What's the dominant mood there over the last five days? Oil's been getting hammered. You know, I trade a lot of the ETFs around oil and and the inverse ETFs. Uh, DWTI is a great one. It's been moving up because oil has been moving down and oil stocks have been moving down. So pessimism in the last five days is the dominant theme. So the point of all this is that what you, uh, what opinion you have about the market really depends on the time frame. People will send me questions all the time saying, what do you think of Microsoft? What do you think of Suncor? And I have to ask them, well, what's the, What's the outlook? What, what's the trade? Are you looking for the next five days? Or are you looking for the next five years? Because the answer can be very different based on the chart you look at. Oops. All right. So let's continue rolling along. And uh, what I'm going to get you to do now is if you have some stock questions, you can post the symbols. Um, I won't be able to get to every one of them because we have a few hundred people in here, but I will try to do that. I'm going to come back to your questions in a little bit. Uh, try to post the symbol. If you give me the company name, I know a lot of symbols, but I may not know the one you have. So, uh, and if it's also if it's on the Canadian market, please let me know it's on the TSX or because um, again, I don't know every symbol. I I uh, try to know most of them, but I don't know all of them. All right. So before we start answering questions, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the Stock Scores Education Center, which is something we launched last year. It is online learning, so that you can take what I've taught you today and expand that knowledge into the point where you can actually trade my strategies. So there's four sections in our online learning area, the Stock Scores Education Center. There's the getting started section, which is 100% free. It's a lot of videos and documents on how to use tools on the Stock Scores website, basic concepts of trading. We then have the foundation area, which is the theory, the uh, important essential knowledge for analyzing charts and trading it successfully. So risk management, how to analyze a chart, um, how to size a position, what the concept of expected value is and why that's so important. Once you understand those concepts, you're ready to start learning my strategies. If you are a longer term type trader, let's say you want to do 10 trades a year, you want to manage your retirement portfolio, that sort of thing, I designed the investor course for you. If you want to make a career out of trading the stock market, maybe you want a day trade, swing trade, you want to do an hour a day, all day, that is the active trader course. So I'll jump back into stock scores here and go to the education area. And you can see getting started, foundation, investor, active trader. Now I can expand any one of these areas. So there's all of the videos in the getting started material. I can look in the foundation. I can see, okay, here's the six elements of chart patterns. That's what we've talked about tonight. If I click on this, I can read a write-up. There you can see me talking about inflection points, the exact same concepts we were talking about tonight. I've basically covered what this module is all about. Now, if you wanted to watch a video that explains it, well, I can click on the little video icon here, and I can watch a video that's half an hour long on the six elements of chart patterns. And you can watch this video as many times as you want. Get the concepts nailed down. It's done in HD, so you can make it full screen. It'll have lots of detail in the chart. If you want to print it out, if you want to print out the written document, oh, sorry, this is the assignment. Uh, the assignment is a series of questions that I've created for you, so you can practice the concepts you learn. You can also print out the written document. Click on the little print icon, and it'll download a PDF. And finally, oh, that's the... Uh, printable document for uh, the assignment. And finally, there's a little test you can take. So if you want to uh, check your understanding of the concepts taught, there's a little multiple choice test. You can see here I got 100%. I'm amazing, aren't I, since I wrote the test. Um, but that is uh, all designed to help you learn this material. So once you do the foundation, you're ready to learn my strategies. Here are some position trading strategies. And then I have day trading strategies. And in fact, I just uploaded a new day trading strategy last night called the Stock Scores Wave, which I've been doing uh, with nice success lately. It's working well because the market is pretty boring. And so I had to come up with a strategy 
to help me uh, profit from the intraday gyrations in these large cap stocks that we see. So that's what the wave is all about. And I'll talk about those things next week. So next week I'm going to do a webinar on swing and day trading. I'll talk about the active trader strategies. And I'll also do a webinar, I think on Thursday, on position trading, on investing, where I'll focus in on the investor strategies. All right. So that is the Stock Scores Education Center and how it works. Trader training, pretty simple. You can start by reading my book, The Mindless Investor. It gives you a real basic introduction to the stock market and to my approach. Then you do the foundation course. That'll take you a week or two to get through that material. And then you're ready to start applying my strategies, either the active trader strategies or the investor strategies. If you want to become a Stock Scores investor, if you want to learn my approach to investing, again, longer term trading, you take the investor course. It's all done online. You watch the uh, video, you read the lesson, you do the assignment, you take the test, and you learn my strategies. You get access to the Stock Scores tools. So on Stock Scores, we have a tool called the Market Scan. I can go to the Market Scan. I can select a strategy. Let's do Abnormal Breaks Canada, run the report, and there's two stocks that met those criteria. I view those charts to see if they have the right chart pattern. I say, okay, this one's pretty good. I'm going to buy a 26, stop at 24, see how it works out. Why do I like this stock? I, by the way, I don't love it. I think it's pretty good. It has optimism. It has low volatility, and it's breaking from low volatility. That tells me that that stock has got a good potential to go higher. Again, I don't love it. I think it's pretty good. It's also yielding 7.8%, which is a little suspicious. I have a feeling that that yield may not be safe, but you never know. How do you become a Stock Scores active trader? Well, again, I've got a course for that. I have created special indicators for a program called TradeStation. So you can see I've got little dots on these charts. If I go into another area of the website, you'll see there's pink dots, blue dots. Those are all indicators that I've created for trading actively, short term, two minute charts for day trading, 30 minute charts for swing trading, sometimes 13 minute charts for swing trading. When you take my course, you learn all that material, you'll learn my strategies, and you get support from me in either of those courses as you work through the material. Each module is broken up into uh, written video assignment and test components, at least for the foundation. In the uh, strategies, it's just uh, a written and video. There's no assignment or test because you actually practice trading and that's your assignment. Now, normally, my students just kind of do this all on their own, but once or twice a year, I do some live training as well. And so starting at the end of the month, Saturday, November 28th, I'm going to do a foundation live. So much like this webinar is happening now, I'm going to go into a lot more detail, more in depth about the foundation material. We'll talk about what we talked about tonight, which was the six elements. But then we go into more detail about chart patterns, about how to size a position, do risk management, how do you know when to sell, what makes a stock worth buying, what makes a stock worth shorting. and then we actually do it on Monday till Thursday in the evening for about an hour, maybe 75 minutes. We actually practice doing market scans. So we will go into the Stock Scores Market Scanner and we will run different scans. So we might say, okay, let's start with the Stock Scores Simple Weekly US Scan, run that, and then we will together as a group inspect those charts. I'll give you a chance to look at them, decide whether they look good or not. We'll make the charts nice and big for you so you can see it. Let me. Uh, do that now and uh, you know we're just going to go through these and say okay is this a stock to buy today or not this to me is a good hold not a stock I would buy go on to the next one and we do that together so that you can really practice what you have learned in the course material with real examples without the benefit of hindsight you know do the analysis as it happens in the marketplace now for those who want to take the active trader course you can also um, then watch me trade so Monday till, I said there Thursday, but I think we're going to do it Friday morning as well. So Monday, November 30th until Friday, December 4th for at least the first two hours of the day. And it could be longer. Um, so if you're in the uh, West Coast of North America, that'll be 6.30 till 8.30. If you're on the East, 9.30 till 11.30. I'm in Hawaii, so it's, um, it's really early for me. It's 4.30 till 6.30. But uh, that's okay. I get up every morning, trade the market in the dark, and then I got a nice early end to the day because the market is closed here at 11 o'clock. Anyway, what we're going to do uh, Monday to Friday of that week is trade the market. And I'll actually buy and sell stocks. You can watch me do it. I will 
be a little slower than normal. I'll be explaining things as I do it, so I'll probably miss quite a few trades because I find that when I'm teaching, I'm often uh, not as sharp as I should be. But that's okay. It's all about uh, teaching you how to do what I do every day as a day trader and a swing trader. So that's the live training. So we've got a special offer up until November 26. Anyone who purchases the investor or active trader course before November 26 will get the uh, foundation live session on Saturday and the strategy application series for free. So normally that would be a $500 upgrade. When I teach a class live, it's $500 more. And so I'm going to give those for free. I think it's a great way to help everyone get up to speed quickly. And I think you'll find uh, it's well worth the time you put in. I also record all of the sessions um, so that you can go back to them. Maybe you miss a day or maybe you can't watch them all. Maybe you're traveling somewhere, whatever. Uh, they're all going to be recorded on video so that you can always go back and watch them later. Cost. Uh, there's several options. The foundation course, which doesn't include my strategies and doesn't include the live market analysis sessions that I will be doing that week, but it will include the Saturday session uh, for the foundation course. That's $995. The investor course with the live evening training is $24.95. And the active trader course with the live trading, uh, you get all the other sessions as well, but you also get me trading in front of you live. You'll see a screen. You'll basically be watching this screen while I trade, probably more likely this screen. So as I'm doing things, you'll watch what I'm doing. I'll explain why I bought Microsoft today here, why it was a great short here. I'll explain all that, and I'll actually do the trades, and um, you'll see where I sell them, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not uh, shy to you know, show you what I do to prove that I actually know what I'm doing and that this stuff works. And so you will see that as you go through. Now, if you, um, let's say last year you took the investor course and you want to upgrade to the active trader course now, you pay the price difference plus $250. So if you think you want to do the active trader, it's cheaper just to buy it right from the get-go. But if you want to go step-by-step, step, you can start with the foundation and then upgrade. You're just always going to pay a $250 premium for each step that you take. So that is an option. Some people want to do it step-by-step. That's the upgrade option as you go through. Um, many of you that are on the webinar tonight have taken my courses in the past. You're more than welcome to participate in the live training sessions. Um, I will be sending some emails out about that. It's going to be $195 for you. You don't have to pay $3,000 again. Uh, you pay $195. And so keep an eye out for those details. All right, so we're just about ready to answer some questions. I'm going to quickly launch a poll because uh, it's a way for me to follow up with an email for anyone that wants to uh, learn more about the upcoming courses. So you can um, answer this poll and then we'll get into your stock questions and I'll try to uh, do some analysis for you in real time. I'm going to take a quick sip of water here. I'll leave that poll up for just another moment. Uh, please answer as quick as you can. I don't want to leave this up forever. Um, and then we will get to the stock questions. While I'm uh, waiting for, I see that there's some more general questions, so maybe I'll take this opportunity to answer some of those. I'll probably miss some because there's so many questions coming in, but let's, I'll do my best. Uh, do I do options training? I do not. Um, I'm not an expert on options, so I don't like to teach things that I don't do myself, so I apologize, but that's not something I teach. I'm not a big fan of options, to be frank. I think, uh, I mean, the majority of people that trade options lose money. And I think it's a tough, tough thing to do. But if you know how to trade options, great. Just don't go into it unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, do I ever use the one-minute time frame when day trading? I don't find it all that reliable. I find the two-minute is about as short as I like to go. So um, I would – there are times when I'll look at the one-minute on a really fast-moving, highly liquid uh, stock like – uh, the VXX, for example, or sometimes on the S&P 500 ETF, SPY. Because it's trading a couple hundred thousand times a day, you can get an okay message from that uh, from that as well. Uh, someone is saying, GoToWebinar says, I've entered as an attendee in listen-only mode. How do I get the video too? Everyone, I think, is getting the video. So if you're not able to see it, I think it's something wrong on your side with your computer, perhaps uh, some firewall issue. But the good news is I did record this session, so I will be emailing out a link to the video probably tomorrow. 
And uh, I apologize that you're having technical problems, but um, uh, unfortunately, I don't have much control over that. Um, so for options, if the signals are good, why wouldn't options work well? Here's the problem. There's another dimension in option pricing, and that is the implied volatility that's priced in the option. You can be right on the stock. You can say, okay, I think Microsoft is going to go higher. But if the premium that is priced into the option is high, then the stock has to go up enough to cover that premium. And there's a lot of people that don't understand the implied volatility in the option premium and how it gets priced. So what happens is if a stock all of a sudden becomes volatile, the option premium will really spike up. And that means that even if you're right on the stock, maybe the stock goes to what you thought it would go to, but it doesn't go up enough to cover the price you have to pay for the option. And that's the danger in options, and I think you really have to understand that concept. Um, for the investor course, how much training goes toward the different market scans? Well, all of the um, strategies have a specific market scan for that strategy, so each strategy teaches a market scan. As well, when we do the live training, I will actually be doing those market scans in front of you, for those evenings and then we will um, analyze those. So there's a lot of application of the material. It's not just theory. The foundation part of the course, the Saturday that we do, is theory. And then the live sessions after that for the following week are all application. I call them the application sessions. Okay, uh, most stock questions here. How much capital does one need to have to trade? Um, really a question of how you what you consider your time to be worth if you have ten thousand dollars you can get three times leverage with ten thousand dollars you get thirty thousand dollars of buying power and that means that you can buy thirty thousand dollars worth of stock in a day if you're buying a three dollar stock that stock can move you know enough to pay you a thousand dollars if you're buying Microsoft because it's a much less volatile stock you might be looking at a stock that can move a hundred two hundred dollars so as a general rule, and this is a really general, simple rule, um, I think that you can make uh, up, up until $100,000 of capital. If you're good at this, you can make 1% on your money day trading per day. That is assuming you're disciplined, you're very good at what I teach you, and uh, the market's reasonably active. All right? That also assumes that you're using leverage. So. If you have $10,000, you're kind of looking at $100 a day that you can make. Is that worth your time? Maybe, maybe not. If you focus on lower price stocks, you might be able to get that a little better. Now, when you get it to up to $100,000 or more, it gets a little harder because it's harder to buy size. Um, I trade with a seven-figure account, and I got to trade big liquid stocks because I've got the cash to, you know, in order to make my cash work, I got to buy bigger positions. So. Um, it's harder to get that 1% per day when you have more capital. Not impossible, but uh, a little more work. Uh, let me see what other questions we got here. Okay, I think I've answered the general questions, so I'm going to try to um, I'm going to try to look at some stocks now. So I'll take the poll down. Uh, thanks to everyone for answering that. I've got to figure out how to stop it here. There we go. Close that, and I'll jump over to stock scores where I can bring up some charts. What I'm going to do now quickly is just show you what I think of the market. So we'll pull up the TSX. Uh, TSX in a downward trend. The sellers are in control. I think it's a market to be avoided. The breakdown this week looks bad. I think it's uh, indicative of a market that's probably going lower still. Big problem in Canada is the rising US dollar, which hurts commodities, which hurts things like oil, which hurts things like gold. And if the uh, oil companies are suffering, they're not going to be doing financings and borrowing money from the banks as much. There's going to be people out of jobs that foreclose in their houses, so that has a factor on on home prices, on banks earnings, that sort of thing. So you can see all the problems that come from really a strong US dollar, which cascades into a lot of the things that Canada depends on. So that's the real problem in Canada. Uh, the S&P 500 doesn't look all that bad, SPY. It has had a nice six-week rally, but as I wrote about uh, last week, the upward trend was broken on Friday. So I think we're due for a little bit of corrective action in the next few weeks here. Uh, we saw it kind of pick up today. I think the Dow was down at 250 points or so today. And my worry, and this is important, is that we've actually formed a falling top. So those of you that uh, you know read what I put out in my newsletters, 
will know that back when the market broke back here in August, I was worried because I, I said if eventually the market's going to pop up, but if it forms a falling top, then we will have the sign that the market may be correcting. So there is the high from last week, and here is the high from July. Yeah, July, June or July. And you can see that this top is lower than this top. Now, if we go all the way back, that was how the upward trend line looked um, coming into the, the five-year upward trend line. The shorter upward trend line was broken. It actually looked more like this. So it was broken in August. That's when I put out my bearish recommendation on the U.S. market. And But the long-term trend line, again, the five-year, held up and it bounced off of it nicely. My concern now is do we, given this falling top, given this break of this shorter-term upward trend, do we now come down and test this trend line again? I think it's a very real possibility, so I want everyone to be fairly defensive. If you read my weekend newsletter uh, last weekend, actually came out on Monday, I wrote about the importance of now focusing on volatility, so trading the VIX. VXX is the ETF that I trade. I traded it again today because it is how you make money when you have a correcting market. So let me show you the 10-day chart. There you can see uh, the VIX and how it moved today. Made a nice rally into the close. Great trader. There was a good entry signal here, a secondary entry signal there, and it really uh, ran up in the close. That's one way to take advantage of the weakness that we have uh, in the market right now. All right, so let's take a look at some stocks. Someone asked me about BCE. So BC, I'm going to make this, um, uh, right now I've got this set to a three-year weekly chart. I'm going to change this to a, a daily chart. To do that, I go to the charting tab, and I just go down to daily and make it an eight-month chart. Click on create chart, and now I've got an eight-month chart of BCE. I think BCE is going lower. It went parabolic to the upside. All the telcos kind of had a good little run there in October. They gave back some of those gains, pretty normal. You would expect that it would hold the upward trend line, but look what happened today. Falling top, breakdown from a falling top. If it goes through this floor price at 56, 56 and a quarter, I think it's uh, heading lower still. So I'd be a little bit cautious with BCE based on that. Okay, AEM. Now, I don't know if you meant the U.S. listing or not, but that's what I'm going to pull up. Uh, Agnico Ego, who's in control, buyers or sellers? Well, I would say long-term, the sellers are in control. Short-term, we've got a rising bottom here that's higher than this one. I don't love it. I think it's something to avoid. It's not terrible. There's certainly worse-looking stocks in the mining sector, but I don't think it's a great stock to own right now. It uh, needs to start building some rising bottoms and some momentum. T.BDT. Uh, I like this. I think it's a great stock if you own it. If you don't own it, I don't think I'd chase it higher here. Uh, let's take a look at a little longer term. We're going to see some resistance on this stock, first at $14.25 and then at $15. How do I know that? Because those are the old price inflection point peaks. Okay, So those are the price peaks. I think we're going to see it find some sellers, most likely up at $15. So the upside from here is not huge. It's not bad. It's 10% or so. Um, but that's why I don't want you to chase it higher. But if you own it, uh, you're doing well. Had a good good rally today, and I think it can go higher here. I just uh, I don't love the risk reward trade off at these levels. All right, Apple traded Apple a bit today as well. Uh, I broke even on Apple today. Didn't make any money on it, but let's uh, look big picture. Um, Apple broke. I'm going to make this a little longer term chart. It broke through some support back here in August as everything did, but now this top that it formed is a falling top from here. I have a theory about Apple, and I, that is, I think Microsoft is going to start to take market share away from Apple. Some of the products that Microsoft is coming out with, the Surface, the new Surface laptop, um, even their phones are pretty cool. You know, I'm a, I'm a geek. I like gadgets. I got a ton of Apple products, but I'm going to go buy a Surface because it's a pretty cool looking product and I'm not the only one doing it. There's a lot of people doing it. I think that might be one of the problems for Apple. Uh, and Microsoft's chart, just for as a comparison, take a look at this. Okay, that's what Microsoft has been doing. Uh, and if we go back even farther, it's been rock and rolling. I mean, this was a boring dead stock uh, two years ago, three years ago, not two years ago. 
and it has been, uh, in stock terms, eating Apple's lunch. It's been biting into the Apple. All right, so what do I think of Apple? I don't like it. I think it's uh, a stock to avoid right now. I think it goes lower. Um, I love their products. Don't get me wrong. I like I, I got an iPhone. I got a Mac laptop. I got I don't know, let's see, 10 iPads around my house. So we are definitely an Apple family, but uh, I think that there's some problems where they're going to lose some market share, maybe to Microsoft. Okay. What else we got here? T-VIX. So uh, T-VIX is another way to trade the VIX, which is, I showed you the VXX uh, a moment ago. T-VIX is a leveraged way to trade it. <coughs> I actually prefer the UVXY. It's more liquid. So TVIX and UVXY, they essentially do the same thing, and that is they go up when the market goes down. T-VIX is two times risk. I think UVXY might be three times. I'm not positive, but either way, UVXY is much more liquid. So if you want leverage in, in trading the VIX, I would focus on the um, UVXY. <coughs> Pardon me for coughing. I know that probably sounded terrible through your speakers on your computer, but I'm uh, talking too much here. All right, someone's asked me about Royal Bank, T.RY. Um, today, a little bit of a breakdown here. Let's draw some lines, highlight all the things we've talked about. So notice, uh, I mean, just within a few seconds, I know that this stock doesn't look great. Here's why. First of all, rising bottoms were broken today. That trend line was broken. You have a top here that is lower than this top. So you've got a falling top. You broke down from a falling top. It's not a terrible chart, but I think we could see it get down into the $71 range. Um, maybe it just goes sideways. But I just don't think it's going to go higher anytime soon. So I would uh, shy away from the Royal Bank. Uh, EXE, so T.EXE, extend to care. Uh, great stock, one of the few real winners in Canada. Look at the three year. Um, it's held its own, but in the last year, it's actually been doing pretty nicely, up I don't know, 30 or 40 percent, which for the Toronto Stock Exchange is a good performance because most stocks in Canada have not done well. This is another case of I like it. If you own it, I wouldn't want to buy it here. I think it's getting a little overextended. I would maybe consider it if it pulls back to the upper trend line. So draw a line across these bottoms. If it can pull back into that $899 dollars range, then bounce off of the trend line, that's a way to buy a good stock on sale. Um, but if you own it, I would stick with it. It looks pretty good. Facebook. Facebook, nice upward trend. Problem, bus left the station already. If you own it, it's a good hold. I would not buy it here, um, at least not on this time frame, on the six-month time frame. I actually bought Facebook yesterday traded it, was it yesterday, maybe two days ago, um, because it's been making a nice little snapback from a flag pattern on the shorter term chart. But here's the picture for Facebook. There was our line of resistance. There was our line of support. I just drew those across the inflection points. Super simple stuff. Now, are those lines converging or diverging from one another? They are converging. Therefore, you had compressing volatility, just like you had back here when those lines were converging toward one another. Then you had a break here, and the stock went up. Here you had a break from low volatility, and the stock went up. You don't buy it here because it's too far up. It's too risky at this point. But back here, nice little, uh, nice little setup on Facebook. So if you own it, stick with it. Watch for a break of the trend line as a sell signal. So Cisco, believe it or not, this was another stock I bought today. Uh, actually lost money on Cisco today. Let's um, let's show you the two-day chart just for fun. I know you're probably not asking about the short-term view. So I bought Cisco this morning right here. And uh, it went up nicely. It was doing okay. And then the weakness in the overall market really dragged it down. And I ended up, um, I, I bought some here. I added to my position here. So I ended up losing a little bit, not a lot. Uh, but I lost a little bit, got stopped out right there. And I kind of whipsawed back and forth, but finished the day down. All right, so that's how I day traded it today, kind of boring, because it didn't do anything great. Bigger picture, six-month chart. Sellers are in control short-term. Long-term, they're in control by the buyers. Okay, we have rising bottoms long-term. I would avoid it until you can see it break this pullback. So if it can break the pullback from a rising bottom, as long as it doesn't go down through 2750, might be a time to pick it up as a swing trade. But I would uh, otherwise sit on the sidelines with Cisco. Okay, we're going to do a few more, and I apologize, I'm not going to get to everyone's because there's just so many uh, charts being posted here, but I'll do my best. So SPHS, big 
uh, day trading stock the last few days, probably the hottest day trader because it made a huge pop and a lot of people were shorting into that strength and they got crushed because the uh, the buyers were actually pretty resilient. So, you know, anytime these uh, biotech stocks make big pops, big gaps on the open, you get tons of people shorting them. And then the buyers actually stepped in and crushed the shorts because they hammered it higher. And again, the shorts pushed it down yesterday. But look at that, a break from a rising bottom from diminishing volume. Yeah, I'll draw this out. Can't see it if I don't draw it out. Um, and the reason I'm talking about this on this really short-term time frame is because I think this is the only way to trade this stock right now. It's um, just too volatile, too uncertain to do it any other way. So here was a little downward trend. Okay, we'll make that red. And here was a little upward trend. And I can draw a line across the tops at that point and make that green. And there was a little breakout right there. This is the five-day, five-minute chart. And up the stock went. Okay, back here, you had compressing volatility right there. There you had a break from compressing volatility. Nice little pop. What do I think of it now? I don't like it. Look what happened. Falling tops. What is that a sign of? Optimism or pessimism? It is pessimism. There was our line of support. All I've done is found the, the inflection point lows. There's one, two, three of them. I drew a line across them. All you need is a ruler and a pencil. There we break down through support from pessimism. That's a pretty good sign that this stock is going to go lower. But again, you got to be a pretty savvy uh, day trader, swing trader. Keep a close eye on it if you're going to trade that stock because it's not really appropriate for anyone who can't watch their screen pretty carefully. All right, Baba, Alibaba, believe it or not, I traded, I didn't trade it today, I traded it yesterday. Um, you guys are sort of highlighting all the stocks that are in play, there's lots of action in them. So on the daily chart, we had a good little run on Alibaba, but it broke the upward trend line. Uh, a big uh, fund manager came out, I think on that day where I was circling there, and said he thinks the stock is a short, and he's a guy who manages billions of dollars, so people listen to him. And that's kind of taken the air out of the, the balloon, if you will. Uh, the Baba balloon, but also it hit resistance. So when stocks rally into resistance, and how do we know where resistance is? We look at inflection points. So I'll draw in here for you. So there is an inflection point top right there, right? Well, look what happened. When it got to that price level, it got stuck because the market remembers that that was a turning point from the past. Now the upward trend line drawn across the lows was broken uh, two days ago. So I think this is a stock to avoid in the short term, but it's very volatile. It's fun to day trade it, swing trade it. So if that's your style, then watch it. Um, you know, I watch it on the uh, two minute chart. So I'll go into my trade station program and I'll watch it for swings. And just looking, these lines are my risk reward lines. I'll talk about those next week. Um, but there you can see Alibaba in a downward sloping channel on the, uh, 13 minute chart, and it needs to bust out of that before I would really consider it for a swing trade. Day trading, um, it gave quite a few entries today. Um, I actually didn't trade Baba today, but I did trade it yesterday. Just trying to remember where, I don't know if you guys care. Probably bought it right here, and I think I made one-to-one -one reward for risk on it. So not, not a lot, but better than losing, I guess. All right, so I'm gonna do two more. Uh, what do we got here? Let's do a couple Canadian stocks. T.PGF. So obviously Pengrowth is a oil and gas company. Who's in control? Buyers or sellers? Falling tops, the sellers are in control. There's been some opportunities to swing trade this stock because it makes little three or four day pops once in a while. But right now, if you're an investor, longer term, stay away from the stock. Stay away from just about every energy stock. They all look like this, which is bad. You can also get a clue about this. The sentiment stock score really low, 36. Look how long it's been low. We want this to be above 60. It's been below 60 since third week of April. And what happened since the third week of April? It's been a bungee jump. And now we're getting a few bounces at the bottom, but I think it could still go lower still. All right, one more. Uh, we'll do t.itp. t.itp. Uh, Good little pop the last few days. I, to me, that's a swing trading pop, and the reason is I'm a little worried about this overhead. There's a lot of people that own this at higher prices, and when it gets up into that region between 17 and 19 and a half, 20 dollars, those people who have been losing their shirt for some time 
are going to say, hey, I can break even, so I'm going to sell my position. So that's just how human beings think, and you got to be wary of that. Big term, uh, long-term picture, still long-term upward trend, so I don't think it's a bad stock. As far as Canadian stocks go, it's actually pretty good, but you know, I don't love that big downdraft here. I don't know what happened there. Maybe it was bad earnings or something, but uh, I'm not crazy about seeing that. I think it shows a little weakness in the, in the company, and uh, be cautious with it, but I think it's something you can shorter-term trade. All right, so I'm going to wrap up there. There's my uh, coordinates, my uh, personal email address, tylerb at stockscores.com. If you want to learn more about the course, I should just quickly show you this. Go into um, the homepage, and right here in the middle, learn to trade with the stock scores approach. Click on that, and there you get a breakdown of um, our different education programs. So again, there's some incentive to do this now because you're going to get that live training from me at the end of the month for free. Anyone that registers for the course uh, between now and November 26, or if you've registered a couple, I know a few of you bought the course last week, so you're also getting this, but basically anyone new registrations for the course is going to get the uh, live training for free. There's a little bit of the details of that special offer, and you can sign up right on this page. Now, I have access to all of this material already, but for you, if you haven't taken my course, it'll actually have the pricing there, and you just click on it, and you can um, you know, just buy it right from this page. It's uh, not working for me because I've already owned it. So um, that's a good thing to take a look at. And uh, there's videos here that explain what the foundation course is, what the investor course is, what the active trader course is. So give that a look. And uh, hopefully tonight's presentation has been useful. Um, follow me on Twitter. My handle on Twitter is at StockScores. I'll sometimes post my trades on, stock, on Twitter. I will put out little trading cliches, thoughts on the market, that kind of thing. It's free, so why not? Get on Twitter, uh, search for stock scores and follow me. I've also got a YouTube channel. It's got uh, lots of people uh, watch my weekly market minutes video. And it's, again, it's free. So go to youtube.com slash stockscores.com. Subscribe to my channel. And every time I upload a new video, you will get an updated, uh, or you get a, a little alert saying, hey, Tyler's uploaded a new video. Check it out. Um, and uh, th my Market Minutes video is real helpful. You can also watch my Market Minutes video on the Stock Scores homepage, but uh, I think it's better to subscribe to the channel. But if you go down to the bottom right here, there you can see my Stock Scores Market Minutes for November 9th. Watch the video. You'll see that I gave a, a warning on where I thought the market was going to go in the short term, and today we see the truth. That's tonight's presentation. I want to thank you all for joining me. I apologize if I didn't get to your question or your symbol. There was just so many coming in, I couldn't get to all of them. I have recorded this as a video. I will send you a link as soon as I have compiled and uploaded the video. Be sure to register for the other webinars. We've got one Tuesday, one Thursday next week, and then the following Tuesday we have one as well. You can register for those right on the Stock Scores homepage. Just go to stockscores.com. There's a webinar link right at the homepage. Uh, sign up for those. Uh, they're going to build on the topics we talked about today. So as I said earlier, this was kind of the boring one. We're going to get into actually applying some of this stuff next week in those webinars. Have a great week in the market. Hope to see you next week and trade well.